In online circles, the name Time Cube has become synonymous with incomprehensibility, poor web design, and absurd conspiracy theories. Most people discover it after sarcastic remarks in forums and investigating for themselves, though even after seeing it, the subject remains elusive and confusing. The website is mostly one massive page consisting of aggressive prose detailing a theory claiming that time is cubic as well as proclaiming the supreme intellect of its creator while insulting everyone else. Those who attempt to describe the theory for the more befuddled readers often find themselves at a loss. So what is the Time Cube? Where did the theory and website come from? And how did it gain such popularity? Sometime in 1997, a website was launched at the domain timecube.com, espousing the virtues of, quote, nature's harmonic simultaneous four-day time cube. Though the first iteration of this website is lost, subsequent versions have been cataloged in the Wayback Machine beginning on the 29th of June, 1998. The material on this first recorded page declares in large red lettering, Earth has four simultaneous days within one rotation. Losing three days in each Earth rotation has retarded your mentality to stupid and an education of evil. You do not have the mind or education to envision nature's time cube. The rest of the website is laid out vertically, divided into sections that each use unique formatting. The next section states in all capital letters that, quote, Three equator four corner earth time rotates 96 hours as a simultaneous four day cube. You were taught that the earth has only one equator as if the earth was flat. You were taught ignorance. Creation has two sex poles and four corner races of humans. God is cornered as a queer. This second section is signed as Gene Ray, cubic. Just beneath this, he attempts to explain his theory with more specificity. Quote, if Earth stood still, it would have midday, midnight, sun up, and sun down as four corners. Each rotation of Earth has four middays, four midnights, four sun ups, and four sun downs. The 16 space times demonstrates cube proof of four full days simultaneously on Earth within one rotation. The academia created one day Greenwich time is bastardly queer and dooms future youth and nature to a hell. Ignorance of four-day harmonic cubic nature indicts humans as unfit to live on this earth. Gene Ray, cubic. These descriptions are accompanied by diagrams which attempt to illustrate his theory, but they are similarly difficult to comprehend, with labels such as human form is a personified pyramid and 4 slash 16 cube divinity. He also had a $1,000 bounty to anyone who could disprove the theory of time cube, though he would be the ultimate judge. This website acted as a hub with hyperlinks to other timecube.com pages and another of Ray's websites linked at the bottom. The first apparently relied on a diagram as the crux of its argument, but the image has since been lost with only the text archived. The second link, Timecube Simultaneous 4-Day Creation, hosted a single image, which also has been lost. The third hyperlink, however, took the user to AboveGod.com, a website that was approximately equal in size to the core Time Cube website. At the very top were the words, Christianity is poison forced upon children. Nature's harmonic Time Cube creation reigns supreme. Welcome to the site where Time Cube is above God. God is ignorance. It also appears that Ray had attempted to have his theory published in a newspaper, but had his requests rebuffed. He writes on AboveGod.com that, quote, St. Petersburg Times refuses to inform the public of the time cube that indicts them evil to children. It seems likely that, at this time, the website was being discovered by internet users who would link it in their forums, though records of this activity appear to have largely been lost as the forums where they were shared were deleted. Ray began to write additions to timecube.com in 1999, expounding further upon his theory with more incomprehensible prose, likely in response to increased website traffic. As the months progressed into the 2000s, Ray began to add to the site with increasing frequency, inserting new text with new formatting each time. He emphasized the importance of midday and midnight as, quote, major time points while also expanding it beyond physics to biology. He declared that, you are a personified pyramid corner. A human will rotate around four corner lifetime stages within a family metamorphosis. Baby, child, parent, and grandparent. Name your four slash 16 great-grandparents. 
Along with these updates, he created many more pages on timecube.com. Most of them were simply rehashes of what was said on the main site, but one in particular seems to be answering a direct question. Are you Jewish? He responded aggressively. I am not Jewish, neither was my mother or father. Anyone saying that Jesus and his Jewish father had something to do with my birth is a damn evil liar. As time went on and his page's view counter ticked into the hundreds of thousands, his writing only grew more fervent and enraged. For the next two years, Ray continued his attacks against education with vigor, claiming that all educated are stupid from brainwashing and indoctrination, and that educated people are stupid cowards. This sudden surge of hatred was apparently due to the refusal of universities to hold debates about the time cube. He declared that, quote, they are actually brainwashed stupid and decline any public debate for fear of public embarrassment. Physicists forbidden to acknowledge time cube. Stupid educators always beget stupid graduates. Not one knows of their four-corner metamorphosis. Gene Ray. These new diatribes would appear at the top of the page, bumping his previous sections farther down. Since Ray never deleted any of his previous writing, this meant that all of the updates to the site would still appear in reverse chronological order, gradually elongating the page to massive proportions. This also meant that the crux of his argument and his diagrams would appear at the bottom, making the page even more incomprehensible to new readers. These updates generally would add little new information to the theory, with Ray opting instead to reword his previous statements about the time cube and to insult religious people and educational institutions. As his anger grew, so did his ego. He proclaimed himself both the greatest thinker and the wisest human, as he was the only one able to comprehend the time cube. He stated that, quote, I am a cubic thinker and far wiser than any god, any scientist, and any educator who preaches the evil singularity of a single first corner. Gene Ray. He created two new sites, thegreatestthinker.com and thewisesthuman.com, to solidify his point. The former simply reiterated more of his theories and opinions, while the latter only had a link back to timecube.com. Some important factors of his theory became clearer as he posted, such as the importance of the duality of male and female, and his firm belief that the four corners of the time cube and human life were representative of one another. He also believed that each person has four corners on their head, but exactly what this means is left unclear. Despite the relative obscurity of the website, it was apparently able to attract some level of attention. It was featured on Crank.net, where it was given the title of Elucid, and it appears that from here it gained traction on forums, where it and sections of it became early memes, such as Educated Stupid. But to the surprise of internet users eyeing his writing, Ray would be given a platform for his theory, as well as the academic debate which he so dearly desired. Sometime in 1999 and 2000, Jean Ray was interviewed several times by a man named Michael William LeBron, better known by his pseudonym, Lionel. These interviews took place on the ill-fated internet radio site Iyata, which shut down only two years after it was created, and as such, the interviews appear to have been lost. However, Lionel had a strong cult following, and he helped spread the word about TimeCube even further. In 2001, Jean Ray conducted another interview with a much lesser known man named Bruno Connolly. The first 20 minutes were preserved by Connolly on tape and subsequently shared online. Hello. Uh, hello, can I speak to Jean Ray, please? Hey, Jean Ray. Hey, Jean. My name's Bruno. I'm calling from San Francisco, California, and um, I'm doing a little, a little studying on the time cube, and I was wondering if you might have a few minutes to uh, chat with me about it. Sure. So, um,. So, so maybe if you could just explain Much of what he discussed the, uh, was a rehashing of his website, itself. but it helped to clarify just how closely his philosophy of a four-stage life cycle correlated with his view of the time cube. A human is really a quarter, or one corner. Just in, like human metamorphosis, you like the fingers on your hand. You got the, the baby, the child, the parent, and grandparent. And you, you can't be four at one time. You, you, the baby dies, come the child, the child dies, come the parent, the parent dies, come the grandparent. Everything created has a top, bottom, front, back, and two sides. The solar system has that, the earth has that. He also took the time to clarify his numerology. You, uh, like you had four grandparents, and each of them had four, for like 16, 
but you don't use 16 because that demeans the value of four. What you actually have is four fours. Ray's thoughts on religion and his experiences online were also shared. So, so what about a what about a concept? I don't want to use the word God, but you know, of some of some creator, of some higher being, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. How does that tie into the time cube and the theory of, of fours? And well, well the the, uh, the uh, creation uh, creator what is not uh, it's not a human form. It's more of a cubic spirit, a cube spirit. To the best of your knowledge, are you uh, the first person to have discovered the time cube? Yes, I can't find anything anywhere. They threw me, I used to get, uh, get on some of the internet uh, scientific and philosophy board, and they threw me off because I wouldn't compromise with them. And so that's the reason I started the time cube. And the, and the he claimed that he'd been working on the theory for 20 years. I said, I've been working on it over 20 years, and I can't find anything else, anything uh, yet that contradicts it. Towards the end of the recording, Ray reiterates his desire for a debate, but partway through his idea, he seems to get distracted. Uh, Lionel show up in, uh, uh, on that e yachty, and uh, it's uh, uh, on these uh, web uh, stations, and uh, I mean, uh, he, he's got a big audience, and like I say, he likes it, and uh, so, hey, let me ask another question. Did you know your father was a fish? My father was a fish? No. Please explain. Well, it's a little micro sperm fish. I mean, the sperm. The ease with which Connolly was able to receive an interview with Ray caught the attention of those interested in the time cube, and it wasn't long before others took advantage of his desperation to share his theory in a form that he could not refuse. Come up with in this thing, but see what religion does primarily. It is. Sometime in late November of 2001, Gene Ray made an announcement at the top of his website. TimeCube lecture at MIT on January 30th, 2002 from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. in Lecture Hall 10250. Outsiders are banned from TimeCube lecture and debate as only MIT students will be allowed to attend the event. Will free speech be allowed? Almost immediately, word began to spread. On December 1st, the lecture date was shared on the Ars Technica forums, where forumites awaited the event gleefully. Though the full recording of the event appears to be lost, the notes of one attendee, one photograph, and a small section of video have survived online, and they detail a surreal scene. There were six seats at the front of the lecture hall. One was for Gene Ray, four were for the students who had agreed to debate him, and one was left vacant at Ray's request, which he labeled as Your God. According to the note-taker, hundreds of people were in attendance, and this is corroborated by the small shred of video that remains online. Throughout the event, the crowd of college students was rowdy and loud, cheering often in mock support of Ray. Apparently, no faculty were present. The note-taker said of Ray's speech patterns, quote, You know the mumbly guy on King of the Hill, Boomhauer? Well, imagine he was reading straight from timecube.com. That's what it was like listening to Gene Ray talk. It sounded like a train of consciousness, but he kept on using different examples, only repeating the time cube has four corners aspect. After Ray's description of the time cube, the other people at the table had the opportunity to ask him questions. During this period, when Ray would give responses, the crowd would shout wildly in support of him. The questions asked by the panel were mostly attempts to divulge Ray's thought processes. The note-taker writes, Eric Downs asks about people being made of different numbers of parts. Humans are a pyramid with two arms and two legs, I guess, and each of those has four main digits on it for a total of 16. Of course, and this I swear is a direct quote, you don't say 16 because that would demean the value of four. That got another wild hoot of approval from the lecture hall. Victor Brar asks the next question. Gene says that negative one times negative one equals positive one is stupid and evil, so Victor asks him to explain more. Gene goes off of his previous explanation about the North Pole and the South Pole and various races and explains like this. One times one equals one makes sense because that's like saying that a North American times a North American equals a North American. But saying negative one times negative one equals one is like saying a South American times a South American equals a North American. Okay, Gene, so negative one times negative one should equal what? A South American! I stopped writing notes here for about five minutes, I was so busy laughing. The audience was also invited to ask questions, and a few glimpses into Ray's life were given. The note-taker writes, A university told him we'll put you in jail if you send us another fax. 
someone asked the question a lot of us must have been wondering. How do you finance your research? Gene beamed proudly and proclaimed, Credit cards! Ray also talked about his belief that the four corners of his time cube also represented what he perceived as the four human races, which were, in his words, whites, blacks, Asians, and Indians. Hoping to get more out of him, one of the audience members probed further. Her, the note taker. Delving further into his four corners, four races point, a student asked how people who aren't in those four races fit in. Gene explained that they fit inside the time cube. Duh. The student said, well, I'm biracial, at which point Jean interrupted and said, You're what? Around this point, students gradually began to leave the lecture hall and the debate was adjourned, but this only marked the beginning of Ray's surge into wider cult popularity. After this lecture, word of mouth helped spread knowledge of the existence of the site and of Gene Ray. In particular, two groups seemed interested in him, internet users and college students, though there was significant overlap between the two. Over time, as this interested body would interview him, new information about his life would be teased out. On October 15th, eight and a half months after his debate at MIT, a transcribed interview was published in a student newspaper of Swarthmore College in Pennsylvania. Kate Duffy, the author of the piece entitled Truth is Cubic, wrote a few notes she had learned about him in the introduction. She revealed that Ray was 75 years old and that he had been an electrician. Over the course of his research, he claimed that he had spent approximately $250,000 pursuing the time cube and that he had received death threats from NASA. Duffy also shared that Ray lived in Cummings, Georgia. Her questions were fairly simple, asking about the basics of the time cube, but he also revealed tidbits about his personal life. He said, quote, My brothers and sisters have some of the highest academic degrees in Alabama, but they don't want to know what I know. He also revealed a bit of information about the emails he'd received. Quote, I get email from kids all the time. Some were suspended for looking at my website at school. I get a lot of email from students saying I should be elected president of their student body and that they'd fight the police, but the school threatens to kick them out. Physics majors want a time cube debate at Cornell. He revealed the logic behind his aggressive prose. I had to get nasty on the website because educators refuse to allow students to debate time cube. I can't throw rocks at them, so the only way I can accuse them is in a nasty way. I have to do this so they'll stop ignoring it. They'd be exposed, all educators. I've sent stuff to Stephen Hawking in England, but they all ignore it. They teach linear time. Time is not linear, it's cubic. Academia does not want it. Professors run and hide. I can call them the worst names in the book and they run and hide. They cannot challenge me. They cannot accept the challenge because they would lose. I could break the plate glass windows of a newspaper building and I guarantee they wouldn't take me to court because Time Cube cannot come out in the media. As more people learned of Ray, internet users would sometimes email him to egg him on, as he had suggested in the interview with Duffy. In November of 2002, he posted one of these emails he had received in late October without comment. It read, For a year now I have studied your time cube truths but have not been able to convince others of its reality. Dumbasses. My mother is a teacher and she said it was nutty and stupid, but guess what? I cornered her, literally, in the living room one evening and forced her to admit it. In order to get her teaching certificate, she had to sign an affidavit stating that she would uphold the Greenwich myth until death. I shit you not, it has been revealed. American teachers are sworn to fight against the truth of Time Cube. Inevitably, he attracted the interest of a tongue-in-cheek show called Unscrewed, airing on Tech TV at the time. They bought him a plane ticket to San Francisco and interviewed him on June 18, 2003 with a set of questions prepared, ready to push back against some of Ray's more befuddling claims. Ray used his favorite prop, a plastic cube-shaped paperweight with a globe inside, to illustrate his point. Gene, how do you know this? What's your proof, scientifically speaking? Well, here's in the cube. You can see it. You can't deny that. I offer any academic institution, any professor $10,000 to disprove it. They can't disprove it, so they ignore it and run and hide. 
he was able to share some of his thoughts about the debate at MIT, and he seemed to believe that he had been lauded rather than mocked. Gotcha. You know, I can't help notice that you're wearing a hat that says Time Cube from MIT 2002. Did you, are you a professor at MIT? Did you teach this at MIT? What's the story? No, I lectured up there last year. They, they uh, uh, it was a student thing. They had about 500 students from MIT, Harvard, and many other universities around there. And they treated me like Einstein now, but the school was not sponsored. I had five dollars cash offered, and the professor would come down and explain the time cube and disprove it. But they run and hide. They, they cannot. The academia cannot allow this to be known because it contradicts everything that they are teaching. He also gave his thoughts about being so well known on the internet. Hey Ray, how, how, Gene, how do you feel about being an internet celebrity? I mean, you're you're huge on the web. Well, the. Uh, it's not a position I wanted. It's something I had to do. Yeah. And and, and no, like I'm not a writer or a speaker, but no writer or speaker understands the uh, time cube. All right. Hey, Gene. Thanks so much, and good luck with your quest to convince humanity of the time cube principle. Thank you. All right. That's Gene Ray. Over the next few years, this attention would inflate Gene Ray's ego even further. Unable to change the minds of any educators, he awarded himself a doctorate of cubicism in late 2002 or early 2003, declaring that nobody could bestow it upon him since he was already the wisest human ever. In October of 2003, Ray casually posted a surprising piece of writing revealing a fact about himself that elucidated a key element of how he had come to his conclusions. He stated that, quote, my wisdom so antiquates known knowledge that a psychiatrist examining my behavior, eccentric by his academic single corner knowledge, knows no course other than to judge me schizophrenic. This revelation was of little surprise to most onlookers, many of whom had speculated that Ray suffered from some sort of mental illness, but this didn't stop them from egging him on. Bloating his ego further, Gene Ray was invited to perform a lecture on April 14th, 2005, this one at the Georgia Institute of Technology in Atlanta. It was advertised on the campus with a flyer which included some of Ray's more outlandish quotes, such as, Life is based upon a perfect math, or your arm would be too short to wipe your butt. A DVD containing footage of both this event and the debate at MIT was produced, but the site selling it has since gone down, and nobody who owned a copy appears to have uploaded its contents online. According to the website where it was being sold, the lecture was attended by 230 people, though the trailer for the DVD reveals the tone that it took on. So, time Cube is in fact a theory of everything, I believe we've come to that conclusion. I would like to know how to apply it in order to get a date. What none of these onlookers could have suspected, however, was that soon, Gene Ray would acquire his first truly enthusiastic and earnest adherent. On March 7, 2005, only a month before Gene Ray's lecture in Atlanta, an Australian internet user by the pseudonym Cubehead joined the forum Graveyard of the Gods, designed specifically for atheist discussion. He began enthusiastically promoting Gene Ray's Time Cube, mostly repeating the tenets that Ray was espousing on his website with similar rhetoric while airing interpretations of his own. Intrigued and entertained by Cubehead's posts, they created a special board specifically for Cubehead and Time Time Cube discussion. Unfortunately, almost all of Cubehead's posts have been lost, as has the initial iteration of his personal website dedicated to Time Cube, named Cubic Awareness Online, which he launched in 2004. However, the second version of the site, released on January 20th, 2006, remains, which expands upon Gene Ray's theories. It contains three main sections, the first devoted to the core principles of the time cube, the second to evidence of the time cube in nature, and the third about how the time cube impacts humanity, all neatly color-coded. Also of note was a section attempting to construct an axiomatic proof of the time cube in 64 cases, as well as a link taking readers back to the time cube board on Graveyard of the Gods. Later that year, he began posting YouTube videos under the name Pyramidors, and he would link to these videos on his website as well. His first video was published on September 3rd, 2006, nine months after the launch of the Cubic Awareness Online website, but his line delivery and video production led commenters to believe that he was mocking the theory or simply attempting to make campy humor. They want to know if God exists. The answer, no. They want to know what the real truth is. The 
the answer? Time cube. Yes, time cube was discovered by Dr. Jean Ray, who is consequently the greatest thinker and wisest human whom humanity has ever known. The following day, he published Death of Steve Irwin, He Died, which only supported this belief that he was making a joke out of Jean Ray. In it, he awkwardly transitions from talking about Steve Irwin's death to advocating for the time cube. During his life, Steve Irwin saved crocodiles and giant Galapagos tortoises. Now that he has died, it's time that we not only save the crocodiles, but also save humanity. We need to use time cube in order to save humanity. At the time of his death, Steve Irwin was aged 44. Four is the supreme number of the universe. Viewers were appalled by his lack of tact. Responding to the criticism, he edited the About section of the video to read, This video is respectful. It's not meant to insult Mr. Irwin or those who mourn his death. Please don't flame me or make threats against me. It was not my intent to offend people. Thank you. See website www.cubicao.tk for more TimeCube information. Over the next two months, Cubehead would post a total of eight TimeCube-related videos, along with two short films utilizing basic 3D animation. The fervor with which Cube had proselytized the Time Cube didn't go unnoticed by Gene Ray, and sometime in early 2007, the two apparently opened communication. In February, Cubehead posted an update to the Cubic AO website stating that Ray had personally given him advice. However, the attention from Ray wasn't entirely positive. Sometime in August, Ray added an update to his site which read, The only official site for Gene Ray slash Time Cube, so beware of associates. No one has my wisdom. In light of this, Cubehead made another addition to the website after consulting him. He wrote a disclaimer displayed in small orange font at the very top of the page, and it appeared that, despite Ray's heartfelt desire to have information on the Time Cube spread out across the world, he also was quite possessive of it. It read, Disclaimer, this Cubic AO website doesn't claim to offer any Cubic prophecies. This Cubic AO site is a secondary, unofficial site that is subordinate to TimeCube.com. This Cubic AO site is not intended to be glorified above TimeCube.com. Scientists don't know what gravity is, they don't know what physics is. We must attack the scientists, academia, and religion, or face cannibalism like Easter Island. Cubic AO is not intended to be more powerful than Dr. Gene Ray's TimeCube site, and indeed, Cubic AO is separate from Dr. Gene Ray's TimeCube site. This Cubic AO site is not intended to contain excessive amounts of artwork. What this last sentence precisely means is unclear. Despite this rebuke, Cubehead would still be granted one of the things he desired most dearly, the opportunity to meet Gene Ray in person, and this encounter would prove to offer more information about him than any other interaction so far. On November 21st, 2007, Cubehead uploaded the first episode of the Dr. Gene Ray Time Cube Experience. This video series would be released piecemeal over the next two months in 8 to 10 minute segments due to the video length limitations in place on YouTube at the time. Hi, I'm Richard Yancharsky, second wisest human. However, it is Dr. Gene Ray, cubic, who is the wisest human on Earth. I visited Dr. Ray in the USA to discuss with him nature's time cube. While traveling by plane across America, a large storm brewed itself up and a cubeless conspiracy caused several flights to Atlanta to be cancelled. But I caught a flight the next day, and when I eventually arrived in Dr. Ray's hometown, Dr. Ray drove his car over to pick me up outside the Waffle House. Yancharsky had arrived on August 2nd, three and a half months before the video was edited and posted. After Ray asked Yancharsky about his flight and about his age, he was quick to reveal information about himself, speaking of his childhood and his family. You got brothers and sisters? Oh, no, I have, I have a younger sister. I have one, one younger sister. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, in my family, I was one of 14. Oh, yes. We lived out in a cotton field, pick cotton and that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. And I got two daughters. One of them has a son, one has a uh, daughter. Do my granddaughter just got married. Yeah. And uh, my grandson, he he has uh, uh, 
two boys and a girl. So I'm on my fourth corner. Yeah. Uh, fourth generation. Yeah, the fourth. The four corners in the pyramid. Yeah, the, um, the, the, the uh, four corner life metamorphosis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Once they arrived at Ray's home, he began to show some of his merchandise and the drawings that he had scanned for TimeCube.com. Right, so cubic, cubic thought reigns as the highest power, Gene Ray Cubic. Yeah, and the back of it says, I am born cubic, the wisest human and the greatest thinker at www.TimeCube.com. Yeah, so that's a good t-shirt to wear. It informs people about the time cube, and so that's a that's a flyer, is it? About the um, one thousand dollar offer there. Yeah. I don't think I did I show you that. Um. All right. Yeah. I, I think it actually. I, I think it actually. Yeah. May, it, 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 I think it has that image on maybe on TimeCube.com somewhere. Right, see, it, you can't disprove this. See? Yeah. Yeah. Four different days, like four corners of the pyramid. Like you have four pads on your hand, your hands and feet. Yeah. It's four corners. Yeah. And look at the, the different type. You got a all day pyramid. You got a dark pyramid. And then you got the sun up and sundown pyramid. Yeah. Eh? These videos would also reveal personal moments, including a visit from his grandchildren. Oh my God. I don't want to. All right. I'm just taking it off. Okay, Grandpa. I love you. Are you all doing what? After this, the two of them went out to a shed where Ray had stored what he called his papers and notes relating to the time cube, as well as printed copies of his emails from supporters and detractors on the internet. There's someone. Yeah, I gotta go through all this stuff. Okay. This stuff would be more better than the notes that Galileo left. All right. Okay. Yeah. What was he famous for? Um, oh, just the idea that the, the heliocentric idea that Earth revolves around the sun. And yeah. The sun was the center of the universe. Oh yeah. But you know he was wrong. Yeah. Okay. Because you know what the center of the universe is. Um, oh, well, it, it doesn't have a center. It, it's composed of opposites. Right now, well, it's the binary oh, yeah. of the sun and the earth. Yeah, okay. Which is which? what give, creates life. Yeah. It's the two of them together. Yeah. Now, the sun has the heat on the outside. It's big like the masculinity. Yeah. Earth is small like a femininity. It's got the heat inside. Yeah. After this discussion, Yancharsky sat Ray down to ask basic questions about the time cube, a discussion which was edited down to a total of approximately an hour. Over the course of this interview, Ray slouches farther and farther down his seat as he appears to grow tired and frustrated. Here, Ray reveals a bit more about his theory, showcasing some of his misunderstanding about mathematics and physics. Even the individual is composed of opposites. They're not, they're, you don't have two hands. They are opposite hands. And if you put them together, they don't add up to two. They cancel out because they're like plus and minus. So, um, tell me about a cube's four corners. Its four corners are its vertical edges, correct? They're what? Its vertical edges. Well, it's like a classroom. If a teacher tells you to go stand in a the corner, then there you only have four choices. Four corners. They used to put dunce stools there and put a dunce hat on you. Yeah. But they're on the four corners inside of a classroom. And it, it debunks three dimensions. Because yeah. they have four, four corner perspective dimensions. Four different corner perspective dimensions. Not three. Three, three dimensions erroneous math. Tell me, tell me about the 3.2 value of pi. The, uh, the the three point two zero value of pi. Oh, well, if if the uh, they use the ninety six four times twenty four is ninety six. That's the value of the cube. They use that instead of one hundred. Then the value of pi would be three point uh, two zero, which is the perfect pi, eighty percent of four. Well, if you're standing in the middle of the road, 
you have a single perspective. But from one side or one pole, things go to the left. On the opposite side, they go to the right. They be, uh, they're totally opposite. Plus, in my, if you add them together, they cancel out. Ray also revealed that he was working on a book with new illustrative diagrams. Mm. And see, that looked like the spider right here. See how the spider? Yeah. See these things are going out here, and these are going back that way. See? Yeah. See, it looks like the spider. Yeah, exactly. See? But now we need to put these in the book. We don't need to put them on the website or something yet. We need to get the book printed with these kind of things on there. Uh, Ray's logic behind the difficult-to-read format of the website was also explained. If you give them a page, a small print, they'll read part of it and give it back to you. Yeah. And that's the reason they use fine printing contracts, because you don't read it. Yeah. So that's the reason the big print is like a billboard. Yeah. Once you see it, you have read it. Yeah. So that's the reason they use big print. Yeah. You don't have to read it. Yeah. At one point, Yancharsky joins Ray and some of his friends for lunch, revealing that Ray is at least not entirely isolated from social interaction. Do, do those people in there end up accepting the time cube, or, or do, uh, just do they believe in the religious beliefs too much? Well, they're mostly religious. They were praying next to him. Most of them are just very much uh, religious, a uh, Christianity area. Yeah. But at the same time, they understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. Later in the series, Ray reveals even more about his personal history as the two drive through a thunderstorm. Tell me about your early life. What was your childhood like as one, one of 14 children? Once they returned, Ray revealed what he had been doing before he devoted his life to his time cube theory. Yeah. And uh, this is probably the best book on the game of Marvel that's ever been written. And I, see, that's a bag, a ton of marbles in it, see? So that's the drawing of you. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, so, so you write, write the kind of comprehensive description yeah, yeah. of the game of marbles and with all the, yeah. the diagrams and everything to describe yeah. how, how the game works. Wow. Yeah. He then details how marbles is the perfect representation of the time cube, combining his passion with his theory. Right, so um, how, how does the game of marbles relate to the time cube? How does it relate to the kind of natural harmony? Well, because the circle is the embodiment, yeah. like the egg. Yeah. And the circle has no value until it's divided. Yeah. It's divided when the two players represent the opposite spirits, put the marbles in, both yeah. of them put the marbles in there, right. which is the parallel universe. Yeah. And so therefore they're dividing the, in the circle into four parts, or two parts, or four parts. Yeah. See, and, and the life, and the marbles represent the cells, yeah. and the life is the action. Yeah. And when all the cells are knocked out of the, um, the circle, then that, you know, that's death. And then the two spirits pick up their cells and go create new life somewhere else. Yeah. By drawing the last episode shows video of Gene Ray being interviewed again by Lionel, where he desperately attempts to explain the time cube. The, uh, but the, uh, Mid days, mid days, like a light race day, sun right. out Asian, midnight to black, sun to Indian, two to one, each earth, the, the uh, time. But despite Ray's receptiveness during Yancharsky's stay, things would quickly deteriorate in a catastrophic way. In the quadrants. Okay. Each quadrant rotates its own 24 hours. <laughs> Sometime in mid-August, after Yancharsky had returned home to Australia, Ray wrote a short update on his website. Cubicao.tk trashes my site with my data and his erroneous prophecy crap. I denounce Cubicao.tk as harmful to Timecube and copyright infringement. 
This message was so important to Ray that he made sure that it was always displayed at the top of his site, even as he made new additions. Despite this negative attention, Yancharsky uploaded the videos anyways, but this rejection from his hero took its toll on his already fragile psyche. On February 13th, 2008, a new user on the Graveyard of the Gods forums by the name of Hans Chess made a post. The contents read, My former student, Richard Yancharsky, died yesterday. He took his own life. I did an internet search on him and found this forum. I registered so that I could inform you of this. Richard played the violin and benefited a great deal from music. He was a shy student and found it difficult to fit in. He was a gifted computer programmer. I'm sure he brought lively debate and hopefully contributed to stretching people's thinking, even if different from their own ideas. Please give him a thought. Regards, Hans. Forumites were understandably dubious, wanting evidence of the death. Quickly finding his profile on Facebook, one user reached out to some of Yancharsky's friends who revealed that he had leapt in front of a train in view of a large crowd. Another friend created an account as well to speak of him. Quote, to those who knew him in high school, he really disappeared off the radar for a few years until November last year when we ran into him drinking by himself at the pub. Everyone's reaction here was fucked but not overly surprised. In recent times, he had been slipping into depression, pro-Nazi white supremacy propaganda, and losing focus on goals in life. There was so much more into his life which has more disturbing elements than Time Cube, but now isn't really the best time to go into them. Hans returned one last time to label Yancharsky as, quote, an amazing poet and philosopher, a man with such passion and ideals. He was a tormented soul who was searching for his way in this world. Sadly, he succumbed to the mental disorders that he suffered. Sometime later, his gravestone was discovered, bearing the date of death that Hans had mentioned. The inscription reads, Profoundly treasured and loved by his family, our little prince who is at peace now. Unknowing, or perhaps uncaring, Gene Ray continued to update his site. Eventually, he would remove any reference to cubicao.tk, only leaving a message near the top that read, The only official site for Gene Ray slash Time Cube. Gene Ray is sole authority on Harmonic Time Cube. Collection of raw data on this site will empower the greatest book ever written. That includes Bibles and academic scientific books. Stop evil ad hominemism. But the attention that Gene Ray desired was beginning to peter out. Shortly after the death of Yancharsky, he began complaining about financial issues, stating that unless he received donations, he may have to shut down. His ramblings also became more and more violent and frenzied. In one update, he wrote, Americans are dumb, educated, one stupid, and they worship oneism evil. It is not immoral to kill believers, for the stupid bastards evolve from son or daughter who precedes them. He also created a Twitter account using the handle Wisest Human, where he made short, angry posts such as Queers killed my little brother, a queer god induces AIDS. This profile would only see use for six months after having posted 30 tweets. Years ticked by and Ray continued his rambling posts, but they were growing more and more incomprehensible. One post reads in part, Naval connects four corner fours. God is born of a mother. She left belly B signature. Every priest has Ma sign but lies to honor queers. Belly B proves four corners. By this point, Ray had entered his 80s and his mental state was degrading. In May of 2012, Ray made his final update to the site, again proclaiming the conspiracy of standardized time. He would linger for another three years keeping the site going, but inevitably, on March 18, 2015, he died at the age of 87. Later that year, the license on the domain ran out. The site's demise was covered by online publications, including The Verge and Gizmodo, but soon after, the site was brought back up by someone posing as Gene Ray. In early 2017, however, it ran out again, and now the page only displays a blank space. With both advocates for the Time Cube having passed away, the site only survives on the Wayback Machine and as jokes online. Otis Eugene Ray now serves as a relic of a past era, but also as an omen for the way that the internet would soon target people with mental illnesses and eccentric personalities for the sake of humor. He acts as a symbol of some of the powers, opportunities, and dangers of the information age, where the newest celebrities can come from the most unexpected places.